SpaceX is planning for its first Starship rocket orbital test flight to launch from Texas and splash down off the coast of Hawaii. According to the company's filing to the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, yes, you heard it right, splash down. CEO Elon Musk has proved to us that he will take every probability into account as the company prepares for its launch. In this video, we will be discussing how Elon and SpaceX have prepared for two separate landings in case of any mishaps. But before we dive further into this, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. SpaceX's ultimate goal is for the Starship to carry humans into low Earth orbit, to the Moon and to Mars, then return to Earth to repeat the journey again. In April, NASA awarded SpaceX an exclusive contract to land the first humans on the moon since 1972. Musk has often spoken about his dream of building cities on Mars. He believes that settlements would need large numbers of people in order to become self-sustaining. Realizing this dream requires a vehicle that is up to the task. Starship is a rocket and spacecraft combination that could ferry more than 100 people at a time to the red planet. The system is designed to be fully reusable, meaning the principal hardware elements are not discarded into the sea or allowed to burn up, as it happens with other launch systems, but are instead recovered from space. This can then be refurbished and flown again, reducing the cost of the whole enterprise. Over the past year, SpaceX has launched five prototypes of the Starship rocket into the skies. The first four burst into flames on landing, but the fifth test flight with the Starship serial number 15 or SN15 proved successful. This allowed SpaceX to move to the next step of Elon Musk's goal to reach Mars. The Starship SN20 is the latest in a series of prototype launches for the Starship series and along with the Super Heavy Booster 4 will soon leave for their first orbital launch test. The Starship rocket will launch on the Super Heavy Booster which will carry it into orbit. The company's recent FCC filings said the test flight comprised of the Starship rocket and the Super Heavy Booster would blast off from SpaceX's launch facilities in Boca Chica, Texas. It did not give a projected launch date. The plan is for the booster to separate from the rocket nearly three minutes into the flight and return to land roughly 20 miles from the shore off the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, the Starship rocket is set to continue into orbit. The filing said, SpaceX plans for it to travel almost all the way around the Earth before plummeting back into the atmosphere and splashing down into the Pacific Ocean around 62 miles off the northwest coast of Kauai, one of the Hawaiian islands. The orbital test flight should last around 90 minutes, the filing said. Elon Musk, chief executive officer and founder of SpaceX, tweeted that the company is planning an ocean landing to avoid any mishappening and hazards, should the vehicle not survive Earth re-entry. As the orbital flight comes to an end after 90 minutes, the spacecraft will not be coming down at an almost straight up position like the previous prototypes. The Starship will be coming down sideways and it will have all of its orbital speed along with it when it re-enters the atmosphere. So in order to play it safe, it needs to re-enter the atmosphere somewhere over the ocean in case something goes wrong. In case there is some sort of failure with the experimental spacecraft that relies on experimental systems like its brand new thermal protection system, TPS, they are going to try put it into the orbital Starship prototype down right in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where the re-entry portion of the flight will happen over the ocean. This will ensure that any debris that ends up dropping from the Starship will fall into the ocean if something goes wrong. The splashdown site will be a safe distance away, but still very close to the island of Kauai. This will ensure that the recovery of the Starship and the potentially priceless information it has to offer is possible while also keeping everyone safe from any sorts of falling debris or parts of the spacecraft. The recovery of salvageable parts will help the company in the future when they need to manufacture new prototypes. It seems like a wise decision from Elon Musk and SpaceX, but the launch would not be possible until the company receives a license from the Federal Aviation Administration's Office of Commercial Space Transportation. 
According to reports, the license approval will significantly depend on the environmental assessment report of Starship's launch operation in Boca Chica, Texas, and landing either on Starship's base or water splashdown ocean landing offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. Not long ago, Elon Musk unveiled SpaceX's newest drone ship for the rocket landings at sea. Founder Elon Musk unveiled the newest floating rocket landing pad on Twitter Friday, July 9th, along with a dramatic video of a flying drone circling the ship. Autonomous SpaceX drone ship, a shortfall of gravitas, Musk wrote succinctly in the post. The drone ship is fully automated with no tugboat required to take it out into the Atlantic Ocean near SpaceX's typical launch site at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, he added in another tweet. The new ship will be put into place in Florida to support Atlantic launches of Falcon Heavy and the flagship rocket of SpaceX, the Falcon 9, that regularly sends Starlink broadband satellites to orbit and NASA astronauts and cargo to the International Space Station, among other customer requests. SpaceX's next expected launches are a Starlink set sometime in July from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California and the CRS-23 ISS cargo mission from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on August 18th, according to the Spaceflight Now's worldwide launch calendar. A shortfall of Gravitas, ASOG, will replace the role of the long-running, of course I still love you, drone ship which has supported Atlantic launches since 2015. Previously, it was switched to the Pacific coast in a month-long journey beginning on June 10. SpaceX is revamping up launches of its Starlink satellites in California, requiring more drone ship support to catch the reusable stages of its rockets. Meanwhile, ASOG will work on the Atlantic alongside SpaceX's other drones. Just read the instructions. JRTI which moved to Port Canaveral from the Port of Los Angeles in 2019. It appears the drone ships may work together to catch reusable side boosters from forthcoming launches if a Twitter conversation in 2018 still holds water, so to speak. Back then, Musk said a third drone ship was under construction. Like the other two drone ships, ASOG is named in honor of work from the late science fiction author Ian M. Banks. The newest ship's namesake is the fictional spaceship experiencing a significant gravitas shortfall, while the other two ships are also named for vessels mentioned in Banks' culture novels. ASOG's arrival also comes as SpaceX is ramping up work on its Starship prototype series that is meant to test out a spaceship that could one day be used as the backbone of a Mars settlement scheme by the California company. SpaceX hopes to do an orbital test flight of Starship soon and is targeting July, but it is waiting on certification from the Federal Aviation Administration in a process that typically takes months at least. Basically, Starship should not have any serious environmental impacts at the time of launch, and even if it has, SpaceX must have some proper consequential measures to curb the damage, says the Federal Aviation Administration. SpaceX must meet all expectations and get all approvals from the regulatory authorities before it initiates the first orbital launch of the Starship rocket. Congrats on having such a great attention span. We have come to the end of this video. Let us know how you feel about SpaceX's thorough preparation for their orbital launch down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I hope you've enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.